Did everyone enjoy their Thanksgiving? We did, but this is about all we have left. It's been a very long day. Hey guys, I think last year for Thanksgiving I did three short videos over each of the three days of the weekend. I'm going to do the same thing this year. I've been sitting on some short videos. And it's a good way to kind of burn through those. Before we get to that, I wanted to say thank you to all the viewers and the subscribers. And especially thank you to some of the awesome people who have sent us things. And even more so, thank you to the people who have made us things. We get some really cool stuff. Everything from postcards, from places big and small, far and wide, Australia, Buenos Aires, various places in England, Paris, Amsterdam. It's unbelievable. I also oftentimes get notes and letters, notes of encouragement, letters of encouragement. People send me cool pictures of their vehicles and projects. Some notes about, you know, things that they picked up on the channel or, you know, tidbits that they think I might find interesting. I also had to learn to kind of keep my mouth shut because when I complain about things being broken or not having them, people just send them to me and uh, it's incredible. So I lost a 10 millimeter wrench. A viewer sent me one all the way from England. It's a Weira Joker, I think is what they call it. It's a pretty cool little wrench. Had a viewer send me a new DeWalt cordless impact. I've been using this thing basically every day since. A viewer sent me a couple pairs of welding gloves because I complained about burning my hands with the ones I have. I mentioned that we were having trouble getting grease. A, a viewer sent me a whole case of grease. It's amazing. There's what? Rechargeable work lights, a bunch of Armstrong Armaloy wrenches and sockets. Guy sent me a whole stack of cake pans because he was worried our marriage might be in jeopardy with me borrowing them from the kitchen where we're currently filming this section of the video. Got a Continental Engine service manual. And my wife, she really likes getting things. There's a Hufflepuff, I don't know, pancake flipper or something. That's a tool for stripping electrical wiring jackets. But the stuff that people have made is, is fantastic. So this blanket right here, it was sent to us by Bluebird Crossing Designs and they embroidered a picture of Max on a blanket. That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. A viewer slash customer made this Hufflepuff towing and brake bleeding service plaque for my, my lovely wife. It's awesome. He carved it out with a, I believe with a CNC router of some sort. Stay. Oh, I better just set it down. This thing here, I've had this, I don't know, probably over a year now. A viewer, I believe his name is Nigel, sent this to me. It says on the back, Tupmania Turning. He sent this all the way from the UK. Using, what, four wrenches to make a W and then the nuts around the outside. It's all turned on a lathe. Random stuff just shows up from Amazon, like this uh, coffee mug. I had a viewer 3D print me this sign, which is awesome. I especially like the fact that one of the bolts is already broken off. Very clever. Another viewer slash customer made us a custom cutting board after the uh, the cheap Chinese cutting board sabotaged our dishwasher. Of course, we got the YouTube 100,000 subscriber plaque, which I failed to show on the channel. We do have it. And then when we were down in Kentucky at the meet and greet with Dirt Perfect, we, we got to meet SOT Metalworks Jr. He has a CNC plasma cutter, and one of the things he does with it is makes signs. 
You may have seen one on Diesel Creek's channel. I didn't want to be outdone by Matt, so we commissioned our own. And it's awesome. The two pieces of, of steel, plasma cut, painted, and then stuck together. We're going to find a place to hang that. That is very cool. And this is a small sample of the things I've gotten. Beer, service manuals, dirty jokes, you name it. It's come in the mail. It's very cool. Thank you guys very much. Also, thanks to everybody who's bought any kind of merch. I never, ever would have thought we'd sell so many of these stupid stickers and t-shirts. It has blown me away. We do have stickers back in stock, finally. I've got a couple of new ones. This guy here and the Moscow Micrometer. That one actually was a, a viewer suggestion. So there it is. Not sure how we're going to split these up yet. Uh, they're probably going to put them in like, I think we have 14 different designs. I'm just going to split them into two different packs, something like that. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, folks, t-shirts are back in stock. Sorry, it's been kind of rough. The company who makes the shirts, Port & Company, they have major inventory problems just like everybody else right now. So we've, we've had to mix and match different fabrics. Some of them are blended, some of them are cotton. I can no longer guarantee what fabric you're going to get. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. I'm sorry. We're doing the best that we can. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this guy's back. Just minor updates. We, had, we got a custom color. Because they're silk screened, you only get like 30 colors to choose from, which sounds like a lot, but it's <laughs> not that many. So I got a custom color. It's a little more beigey, which is what I wanted. That one's back. It's been very popular. Pocket. With the uh, logo printed on the pocket. That's the, uh, the previously most popular shirt. It's kind of tapered off. Probably we will not have that one again. So this will probably be the last run for for that t-shirt and then the new one if you guys think that i wouldn't spend 30 hours designing a t-shirt mm -hmm. and then pay an actual company actual money to make it and print it with a special color just for the purpose of trolling my own wife you don't know <laughs> who you're watching because <laughs> i would definitely do that so we'll see how it goes. I ordered yeah. kind of limited quantities of that one. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to be stocking tall sizes anymore. They just, there isn't a lot of demand for them. So yeah, that's what we got. And please say thanks to the missus. Without her, the merch would not be possible. Or even available because somebody wouldn't have made it. <laughs> yeah. If it was up to me, we'd still be waiting to ship the first one. That's it. Thanks everybody who's bought uh, merch. Bye, folks. Howdy, folks. It's back. This is the Dodge Ram that we did the oil pan, fuel line, shift cable, U-joint, etc. to a couple weeks ago. This time it has a problem with the plow. This is a Western MVP. It's a fancy one. It can be a, a V plow or a scoop or it can angle like a normal plow. Something's wrong with the angling part of it. It looks pretty complicated reading through the service manual. The plow has eight different functions. So yeah, let's see if we can figure it out. All right, I'm going to push the button to extend the left side wing. Okay, that's retract the wing that works correctly. But when I extend, it goes that far and then it stops. The right side's not much better. That's as far as it'll go. But the retract works fine. So if I push the scoop function where it should extend both wings, that's all she's got. But the angle part of it seems to work. Well, folks, I'm not an expert about snow plows. 
especially not these. I think maybe what we should do is just pick a function that doesn't work. Like, let's say the left side extend. We know that doesn't work right. And then we'll try to walk through the hydraulic sequence. And maybe if we can figure out why that one doesn't work, it'll shed some light on why everything else doesn't work. Like I said, it seems to be very complicated. It uses like differential pressure circuits. And I think when you angle the plow, it actually somehow it diverts the, the fluid from the piston side of one cylinder to the ram side of the other cylinder in order to get both of them to move at the same time in sequence. So that's the closest thing I've got to a plan. All right, guys, I made an interesting observation. I figured out if the if one wing is all the way back, the other wing will extend all the way out. So if I pull this guy back, maybe. Come on, little guy. All right, now the other side should go all the way out. Close enough. So I'm wondering if maybe, let's try something here. It's pretty gentle on the way down. Uh, let's see if we can do. Other way. All right, now let's see if it'll raise. Yeah, that's all it's got. It's running out of oil. At least I think that's the problem. Yeah, because it should lift way higher than that. So it's, it's starving for oil. The reservoir is full, I know that. I wonder if it's got a bad pickup tube or maybe a clogged pickup filter. Let's pull the reservoir off. It's this guy here. See if we can make, make any progress that way. Also notice sometimes it'll cough some oil out of the breather, which usually means that the oil is getting aerated, which would be another sign that it may have a bad breather tube or, or sorry, a pickup tube. Anyway, that's the direction. If I'm looking at this right, there's just four screws that hold that on there. Okay, it's not quite what I expected to find. Well, here's my only observation. See this pickup tube? It's got two of these constant tension clamps on it. They're loose. Well, the top one's loose. This one over here is tight. But this one, loosey-goosey. Now, so the oil is about two, maybe two and a half inches below the top of the reservoir. If we come over here and measure this pickup tube, the barb on the tube is right at about two and a half inches. So I think that might be something. Let's get that off there and see if we can do something with it. Well, I'm just not sure if we're onto something here or not. I think that's just some kind of real soft nylon tubing, almost like air brake line. Anyway, I've got these, these clamps here that I use for fuel lines. I wonder if we clamped one of those over it, if it would help. It's worth a try, I guess. I don't, I still don't know if we're onto something here or not. I don't know what do you guys think. It's definitely tighter. Say we give it a shot, it's easy enough. 
Nothing. It's actually worse now. Well, shoot. Thought we had it. Well, it couldn't be that easy. Okay, we'll keep digging. We'll check this out. If I overfill the reservoir, I can make it work. Kind of. So we're on the right track. Somehow it's sucking in air. You hear it? Well, why does it still raise? I don't know. I'm gonna pull the reservoir back off. There's something that we're missing there. <laughs> All right, folks. Just when we were thinking we were smart. Oh, come on. There's your problem, lady. Your pickup tube is no longer picking up. So that'll do it. Apparently the other two screens we were looking at were actually the returns. That's the pickup. I don't know how it actually worked at all, to be honest. Anyway, let's figure out how we can attach that thing and get this get this plow out of here. Thinking it goes in that hole right there. There. I just don't know what's supposed to hold that in there. There's no fasteners or anything like that. It's just kind of a snug fit. If it can fall out once, it can fall out again. I'm hesitant to put anything in there, like a you know, safety wire or something. Might cause more problems than it solves. Well, here's what I'm thinking. I made up this little fold-over lock to fit underneath one of the pump bolts, like so. I think it's a little bit too long. We're gonna have to cut it off. So I'm gonna mark it, hopefully. Mark it here, where we need to bend it. And then we'll trim it up. Well. What do we think about that? I think it'll work. It's better than nothing. Cool. All right, we'll put her back together. And hopefully this time, fingers crossed, it's gonna work. All right, folks, it's gonna work this time. You can feel it. Look at that. Okay, it's burping a little, no big deal. That's pretty slick. I like it. We're done. All right, folks, I think that's it. Short and sweet. Not quite sure what to say about this one. I guess it's, I guess it's business as usual here at Watch Westwork. 
Anyway, I have no idea how this happened or if it's a common problem with these Western snowplows. Doesn't matter, it works now. It did cough up some air, which is not surprising. I mean, it's been sucking air without the pickup tube attached. So all the oil is aerated, the cylinders are full of air. Once that gets worked out of the system, it shouldn't be a problem. I guess we'll keep an eye on it for, for the time being. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. That's it, I'll see you next time. Here's a life goal. I want to go 24 hours without spilling any hydraulic oil on my floor. Something tells me it's not going to happen.